Welcome to Stories of Hope. I'm Christine Hotchkiss. Each week I bring you stories that will inspire you, educate you, and give you hope. I want to thank my studio sponsor, The Motivated Mind Group, your global creative agency based right here in downtown Chandler. Today my guest is Miss Jay Gaines. She went from living in the projects of Chicago to a successful businesswoman today, but it wasn't that easy. She had to fight her way, literally, through all of that, as well as incarceration was in her journey of her life. And through all of her experiences, it brought her to where she is today. Please help me welcome my guest, Miss Jay Gaines. Welcome. Thank you, Christine. Finally. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this was a long time coming, but I appreciate so much you having me. Busy schedule, busy lives, yes. but all for the good of, of everything. And we just actually did a project that you were an event coordinator for. Absolutely. A nonprofit organization that's veteran um, related and founded yes. so that was a good experience too. Yes. got to see a little of your talent and your business experience thank you so you're from Chicago and everyone knows mm -hmm. about Chicago Chi town Chi town our Chi town yes so this is a different time frame I believe mm -hmm. we're different ages and I I've been to Chicago but not an area where I would need to go where you grew up mm -hmm. And your childhood was not so easy. Absolutely. Tell me more. It was an interesting childhood. Um, we grew up in the projects of Chicago back then. Uh, I went back a few years ago to actually film where I grew up at, and they had turned them into expensive condos. Oh. But during the time that I grew up in the projects of Chicago, it was a very, very hard life. I mean, literally having to physically fight every day, going to school, um, going to school, dealing with gangs, uh, a lot of hard times. But I was determined to live a better life. And even as a young girl growing up in the project, I always said that I wanted to live a better life. And if I ever got married and had children, I wanted them to have a different life than what I experienced. And thank God there were some mentors in our community that took myself and a few other young ladies under their wings and taught us etiquette, self-esteem, how to open up bank accounts, different things like that. So let's go back a little bit before you had those mentors in the community mm -hmm. and give a visual because I've not been there. We hear about stuff on the news mm -hmm. all the time and it's so different when you hear it from news versus an actual individual exactly. coming from them. Tell me how it was really like as far as when you said you had to fight when you were younger. I mean, I don't know how young is to have to fight to even just Seven, go to school. eight, nine years <laughs> Little. old. Little, yes. okay. We lived like uh, high up and a lot of times the elevators would be out of order. We'd have to walk up dark stairwells. You don't know who or what was on the stairwells. And the way projects are designed, you walk to the center of the building, to the incinerator to throw your trash away. And a lot of times we would have to fight just to go to the incinerator to throw trash away. That's crazy. Yeah, it, it, was, it was beyond what anyone could even fathom, yeah. So I know this to be true. We only know what we know Right. Until something else has been presented to us exactly. that says it's either good or bad or otherwise. Yes. As a kid, you already knew that it probably wasn't the right thing. I would say to myself every day, like, God, why, you know, because we were raised in a very religious family, God, why am I going through all this, all this drama and trauma? I mean, a lot of trauma that I experienced as a child growing up. You have siblings? I have a lot of siblings. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So what was it like to go to school and have to... <sighs> School was difficult mm -hmm. because you had the popular kids and then you had the nerds. And of course, I fit in with the nerd <laughs> kids. I wasn't glamorous or anything like that. I was a little skinny, buck tooth, very skinny, buck tooth kid with two pump, two pigtails. Okay. You know, and that was how I looked going to school every day. So I was picked on a lot. Okay. Yeah. Until I began to fight back. Mm, and then you yeah. became not so nice. I became not so nice. <laughs> so that brings me to something that we had actually started with the introduction. Yeah. There was incarceration. Tell me how that came about and how old were you? Um, I think I was about maybe 12, between 11 and 12, somewhere along in there. And I ended up going to juvenile detention and I stayed in there almost four years. Um, I had to really toughen up during that time that I was in there. I had no support system, no family came to visit me. Um, it was a lot of fighting, a lot of uh, arguing, um, a lot of the guards didn't really care what went on. So you had to kind of fend for yourself. So believe it or not, I formed my own little gang for protection. 
I mean, you have to do what you have to do when you're incarcerated. So now I'm trying to process this. You get incarcerated <laughs> and you're already doing wrong things, and now you're going somewhere else where you have to fight even harder. Even harder. Which was, I would think, you know, you're going to get some reform for doing something bad, but it was just, excuse me for saying this, it sounds like it was just encouraging for you to survive. It was a survival situation. Oh. It was not anything, I, I can't say that I remember anything encouraging as far as classes that they taught us or workshops, none of that went on. You oh. just, you know, we had a daily routine. You got up, you made your bed, and we were in a ward, like, you know, with a lot of beds, almost like a homeless shelter okay. set up. And you would go to your meals three times a day. You would go outside and exercise, just like, almost like in a penitentiary. No family. So how'd you feel when you were being put in this position for that long of time? Like I was abandoned. Ouch. And I had no family support, that my family wasn't there for me, they didn't love me. I, I just, I felt I was on my own mm -hmm. and whatever I had to do was just me and God, that was all. It was you and God. That, that, that was all I could depend on. That's right. Yeah. So time passed, you got mm -hmm. out, but life probably wasn't easy, right, getting out of wasn't there either. Easy. Left there and went into the Job Corps in Ohio, got into a lot of scuffles and fights in the Job Corps, but they had programs and workshops and counselors. So I began at that point, in addition to the mentorship I'd had before I went in for incarceration, um, I began to become more of a lady, mm -hmm. for, for lack of a better term. Mm -hmm. I became softer. Okay. I wasn't so aggressive. I didn't have to fight so much. I learned to use my feminine ways to mm -hmm. get things that I wanted. Mm -hmm. It does work better. It works. <laughs> I found, <laughs> I'm a survivor of a few things too, and I had to learn to soften up a to little bit. To soften up. Yeah. In certain situations, you have to, you have to level it down and you become do, soft. You do. Yeah. Now, moving forward, because I know there's some other stuff that you've done, and, and you have your media sheet here of the successes, but yeah. that's not even the beginning of who you are either. Yeah. You have uh, some martial arts behind you. Mm -hmm. Tell me more and why. Um, one of my husbands that I was married to was a martial arts expert, and we opened up actually a chain. We ended up opening a chain of martial arts schools. And as the owner operator, one of the things that I required of individuals who rented space for me was that they taught me their different <laughs> martial arts. So I had an Aikido instructor, I had a Jiu Jitsu instructor, I had instructors in all the different arts. And I would take their classes, and I had risen to the level of a brown belt. Oh. At one point. Yeah. Now, you had sent me some clips on some stuff prior to this, <laughs> and one of the interviewers or interviewees for you mm -hmm. was, well, don't let me find you in a, black, in a back alley yeah. or a dark alley. And you're like, you don't want to do that in a lit alley. Yeah, in a lit alley. <laughs> so I'm going to yeah. keep that in mind. I still practice, my mar <laughs> I still practice you know, at home uh, the forms that I've mm -hmm. learned. Because mm -hmm. you don't forget them. It's something like, it's like I do Tai Chi. Mm -hmm. So that's the form of martial arts. It's just it's done in a slow manner for practice, mm -hmm. but when you get into an actual confrontation, mm -hmm. you know how to do those moves fast. Mm, might be something I need to check into. I want to check into that. I will it's good for that. females to know uh, any type of martial arts, I would suggest. Okay, so now you've, you've gotten out into the world, mm -hmm. you got yourself a little on the softer side, you had some mentors you just talked about mm -hmm. a few minutes ago on etiquette which brings you into another career, so you're getting softer mm -hmm. that it brought you into the pageant world? Well, I started out in the fashion modeling business. Oh. Um, one of my mentors that I had when I was living in the projects, she ran a modeling agency in Chicago. And I thought that she was going to teach me how to be a model because mm. I, you know, with the buck teeth and skinny and all that, I wanted to be glamorous. She didn't teach me anything about modeling. She taught me the business. Oh. And I was so impressed. She started me backstage lining up the shoes, dressing the models, and worked my way out to emceeing the shows and then producing the shows for her modeling school. So I found that I loved being the boss. <laughs> it wasn't so much about being on the, on the runway, it was about <laughs> being the boss. But along the way I worked for Barbara Zahn, John Robert Powers, a few other modeling agencies, and taught women how to walk correctly, how to do the different turns and things like that. And then at one point when I gained a lot of weight, I started a plus size division. And that took off because back in those days, they. Plus size models were unheard of. No, you're right. Um, you yeah. know, and we talk about self-esteem. So as a child, mm -hmm. we are programmed 
And that thin. will bring us through, <laughs> not so much the thin part, but is it our minds, Myself. how we see the world, mm -hmm. how we see ourselves. Correct. And that goes into other steps as you have gotten into your story of you've softened. You yes. haven't forgotten who you were, but you right. have softened. That um, there's a part of you that probably still feels you have to fight for, but you talked about weight gain. Correct. Pageants, they don't usually go together. They are totally mm -hmm. against that, which is one of the reasons why I started the first Miss um, Full Figure Chicago pageant in 1982. And then I also produced Miss Dick and Curvy USA. And there are a couple of other plus size fashion shows that I coordinate on a as needed basis for nonprofit organizations to raise funds for them. Self-esteem, tell me more about Absolutely. it. So for you, you already were dealing with your own, but now you're mm -hmm. out there with other women, ladies, whatever the age group is, mm -hmm. that they're all looking for that same thing that Absolutely. they're needing, and you're now their coach Absolutely. and their mentor. Tell me Absolutely. how you were able to help these ladies. One of the first things that I deal with when I'm working with women who have low self-esteem is to change their mindset about themselves so that they can feel good, because a lot of times their family members, their spouses, their co-workers have said negative things to mm -hmm. them and those things stick mm -hmm. and they stick and they become weight mm -hmm. more and mm -hmm. more and more weight and so we work on the mindset and then we work on doing their makeup and their hair and putting them in beautiful outfits and making them feel good about themselves and it culminates with a fashion show or a style show where they can see themselves on video afterwards and feel really good about themselves. Mm -hmm. Because it's not so much the weight, it's the mindset. Mm -hmm. So if we can change the mindset and then dress the outside, mm -hmm. then you've achi I've achieved what I started out for as a coach. <laughs> so I actually was in a pageant in 2005 because I had no self-esteem based oh. on my childhood, those things that stuck in my mind. Okay. Um, so 2005, 2006, 2014. Oh. Um, and But 2005, someone says, oh, you should be in a pageant. I was like, oh, no, you always think of them being <laughs> for pretty people. Yeah. Now I was not no thinking I was a pretty anything. But okay. what it did do, mm -hmm. um, I learned how to have my self-confidence. Exactly. And it took me still some years after that, but it was the beginning of mm -hmm. learning about who was Christine. So right. with that being said, um, you don't have to be in a pageant to say, this is who I am. How would right. you tell another woman or a young woman who doesn't go to a pageant how mm -hmm. they could find who they are without having to go and think they have to be on a stage to say, I'm important? I think one of the major things that I've learned as I've gotten older, I'm in my 70s now, mm -hmm. so as an older, mature woman now, I've learned that meditation mm -hmm. is extremely important, or prayer, whatever it is that you do, with your creator that makes you feel um, comfortable going within. That's really important to go within and begin to find out who you are mm -hmm. and begin to love you. Mm -hmm. Do things for you. I tell women, if you work a job, every pay period, buy yourself something. Do something special for yourself. Mm -hmm. And that begins mm -hmm. to build that self-love. Mm -hmm. And when you love yourself, you feel different about yourself and it builds a confidence. Mm -hmm. Confidence is a, it's always being attacked. Always. If you come across this confidence, someone's going, who do you think who you are? Who do you are? think you are? Right? right. I, I think <laughs> Oprah was having one of those interviews and yeah. was like, who do you think you are? And yeah. you're like, I'm me. Right. <laughs> I have been through so much Absolutely. that I have gotten to the comfort and the confidence of, you don't know what I've been through. Absolutely. This is how I know I'm good. And I had to fight my way, not physically, but I had to fight yeah. my way with other Others. stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so many women I find today have experienced so much trauma in their life, mm -hmm. but they haven't dealt with it. I think the society the has too many labels on it, especially when you look at these magazines mm -hmm. or we're going to go on the social media. You know, there's these expectations that we think we have to look a certain way, talk Absolutely. a certain way, have a certain lifestyle. And in fact, as many people that have sat in your seat mm -hmm. and the people that I have walked and talked with, because I, yes. I talk to everybody. I'm like a little you puppy. Do. I you do. do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like a little puppy. Just you pet do. me <laughs> and yeah. I'll come to everybody. Um, but it works out okay. But what I've learned is everyone's looking for the same thing just at different times mm -hmm. and everyone has had something that has been stuck to them that has not been healthy 
and they're fighting that. And they're then fighting. you have the word healing. Um, and not everyone has the ability to go to a mentor or a coach. Or a therapist. Or the therapist. So they find vices yeah. or other people to try and help them or wear the masks um, on who they are on versus who they, are. Who they really exactly. feel that they should yeah. be. So with that, I'm going to say be confident in who you are and no one has to understand where you've Absolutely. been. Only you do. Mm -hmm. I know that, you know that, and anyone else that will see this will understand that. Absolutely. It's not about proving anything to anybody else but yourself. Absolutely, and I, it took me years to get to that point myself where I had the self-esteem. Even when I was teaching the professional modeling and self-esteem and etiquette classes, there still was a little something inside me that needed healing. I think there so always it took, is. Yeah, it, it took time for me to heal. I won't say that I'm completely healed. I'm like people mm -hmm. say, I'm a work in progress. Mm -hmm. I'm still a work in progress. However, I have healed from a lot of things that used to just anger me like that, mm -hmm. you know. I could understand yeah. that too. Now, you're also a mom. Yes, I am. So now all the stuff we just talked about, now you have the role of being a mom. Now they're mm -hmm. adults, but there was a time frame where they were young and mm -hmm. you had to take everything that you were working through and the things that you did or didn't have for tools. How did you apply that to being a parent and making sure that your kids, because it's a choice, mm -hmm. that we have our children and we make sure that they are the most successful individuals that they can be by giving them the tools? Absolutely. Well, one of the things that I made a commitment to myself was, as I told you earlier, that I never wanted my children to have to grow up in the projects or go through some of the negative things that I had did in life. So I made it a point to make sure that I generated income so that my children didn't have to live that type of lifestyle. So they were raised as military brats. So we lived mostly on military bases. And also, I taught my kids business at a young age. Mm. I would take them every weekend to swap meets. Mm -hmm. I would pay for their booth and everything, their product, let them sell. I would sit in the background and let them sell because you know people buy from children. <laughs> <laughs> they do, that's why they have lemonade stands exactly. on the corners. <laughs> so I taught them business and then at the end of the day they would pay mommy back for her investment of their booth and whatever their products were. And then the rest they would split three ways in their different little piggy banks. Okay. Yeah. So I taught them business and they helped me produce fashion shows. They've done expos with me. They've done trade shows with me. They've done pageants with me. They've worked registration backstage, the whole gambit. And I'm really proud of my children. Um, they own record labels. Um, they in, in, have degrees in college and film and all that. So I'm really proud of them. They turned out to be a great kids. I could say that they are because I did meet one today <laughs> and I have actually heard about your children so but I want to give that opportunity because as a mother mm -hmm. not every mother is as loving as mm -hmm. you have stated you are and as loving as I am there are some mothers that are still working through stuff that they didn't have the tools to become the individual they probably are living as survivors yes and um, they just haven't been presented something that could be different and more beneficial, beneficial for them and their yeah. and for their kids as well like you said you didn't Absolutely. want to be that no yeah. more than your mother was able only able to do what she could while she was in the position she was right. in the projects um, but she got out of there and you hear those success stories mm -hmm. that I was in this really bad area, but I'm not there anymore. Not there. And then they, they do things in a return. The kids do the return for their, for mm -hmm. their kids, and it's a, it's a great thing. Um, you have a lot of different things that have brought you to other successes uh, for your business. Is there anything that I did not ask you that you want to add in here that uh, would be important to maybe a, a young lady who's seeing this, or even someone in her 70s? To my seniors out there that feel that when you get in your 50s or past your 50s that you can't go on. I still do professional modeling. I still work out. Um, I still do motivational speaking. And one of the things that I would love to do for going into the latter part of 2023 and 2024 is I would love to speak at more schools, middle schools, high schools, colleges, and offer self-esteem workshops etiquette workshops and financial planning workshops because I find, find that's really needed in our community also mm -hmm. and not just in the lower income communities and in a lot of our middle class communities they have no concept of financial management of their money mm -mm. and so I would love to do more speaking engagements nationwide and do more fundraisers for nonprofits. Now you mentioned nonprofits is that mm -hmm. a particular reason why you chose that versus a business? I think that the reason why I'm uh, attracted to working with nonprofits as opposed to profit businesses, because they focus on a cause. Mm -hmm. 
And having lived the lifestyle or, or going through all of the hardships that I did growing up, I think that I cleave to nonprofits that are focused on helping different aspects of society, from homeless women to abused women to, you even have abused men, you definitely do. teenagers that are going through trauma, mm -hmm. and um, young children that are victims of sex trafficking, you know, being molested or anything like that. We are a broken world. Broken, totally broken. There is even the, for a person who has everything that you think that you'd want that they've mm -hmm. got, they're still broken. They are so not happy. I have some wealthy friends, and I'm telling you, they are not as happy as people would anticipate. Mm -hmm. No. No, they're I very think, broken inside. I think that's the uh, word expectation of people, mm -hmm. um, ourselves, the comparisons that we do that we shouldn't be Absolutely. doing, but for some reason we do. Um, I did have a different lifestyle where I had the big house and all that other stuff, mm -hmm. and I was stressed out yeah. because my partner felt that he needed to have other stuff, and I was like, "We no, right. <laughs> no." Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so Absolutely. I'm good at being simple. Yeah. Um, before I ask my final question, what advice would you give? We got two categories here because you started at the 70. What advice would you give to a 70-year-old? who, you're obviously very active. I have seen right. some individuals that are not active. Exactly. If they choose to want to turn around and say, you know what, I don't know how much more time I have. I might have another 10 years. Mm -hmm. What would you encourage them to find to do? Number one, exercise. Don't become a couch potato. Exercise if you're over 50. Uh, the other thing is be active. You know, get out and do things with other groups and organizations and find out what your passion is. Even though you might be 50 and over, each of us has something inside us that you're really passionate about. You might have always wanted to cook the best fried chicken. <laughs> you know, you might have wanted to be a, a singer, participate in a play. I say go for it. Don't, don't hold back on whatever it is your dream is because 90% of the dreams are in the graveyard. Oh, that's so very true. Les Brown said that. Les Brown. One of my favorite mentors. One of my favorites, too. One of my several favorites. Absolutely. But yeah, when I first heard that, Absolutely. I was like, whoa, that hit hard. And it, and it makes sense when you think about <laughs> it. Does. It. So many dreams. Now, what would you um, give for advice or a mentoring to someone younger who may be coming from an area that they're not certain about who they are or don't have mm -hmm. the environment that they want to get out of that says, I want to be something different, but I don't know how? I would say seek out mentors in your community or at boys and girls clubs or different organizations like that. Seek out mentors in your community that can help you and move you to where you want to go. And one of the important things about selecting a mentor is select a mentor that's where you want to be. Mm -hmm. You can't select a mentor that's on your same level mm -hmm. because they can't help you get out of the mud. Mm -mm. They're in the mud with you. Mm -hmm. Select the ones that have gotten out of the mud and have cleaned up and are standing tall. Mm -hmm. It's like putting two broken people together. Thank you. You can't do that. <laughs> You're both broken. You can't do it. Can't, can't, can't move forward. No, no, no. no. Um, thank you for that. So I have a final question. Me, the one that loves to ask questions. Okay. If I only had one question to ask to get an idea of how or who I think the individual is that's sitting in front of me. Okay. It would be this question. What message would you like to leave everyone based on your journey of life? You can survive. You can be, have, and do anything you want in life. Nothing is holding you back except between your ears. We hear that a lot, mm -hmm. but what if someone's stuck on the, the how versus the why? Don't worry about the how. Let the universe take care of the how. <laughs> you put it out there what you want to achieve or accomplish and uh -huh. let the universe take care of it for you. You have to believe in what you're You've wanting. You've got to have faith. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And faith isn't necessarily a religious thought. No. It's the founding of you inside. Inside. Yes. Inside. Thank you very much for that answer. I really Thank did you. resonate with that one. Absolutely. Is there anything you'd like to add that I didn't ask before we uh, call it a show? I would just like to say to your audience that, you know, it's important that you live your life to the fullest while you're here. We never know when it's our last day. Um, so live your life to the fullest and enjoy life and pursue your passion. 
And can I add that no matter how far you've been mm -hmm. or your hardest days, you there already is a sunshine. There is a sunshine. And, and you've probably thought today was your worst day, yeah. but you had some other ones and you made it past those. So you're 100%, you know, Phyllis on your way. Phyllis Hyman said, this too shall pass. Oh, sometimes we go, not fast enough. Not fast enough. <laughs> yeah. Thank Absolutely. you, Miss J, for being my guest today. Thank you, Christine, yes. for having me. Yes. I really enjoyed being here on your show today. Oh, and you can be contacted? The Wholesale Diva at gmail.com. Okay. They can always reach out to me. I'm on Facebook. I'm on LinkedIn. Uh, I'm on a lot of social media. I'm not extremely active on social media, but they can find me on social media and reach out to me. Sounds good. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. I want to thank my studio sponsor, The Motivated Mind Group, your global creative agency based right here in downtown Chandler. If you have a story you want to share that would help someone else along their journey, please email me to the address of stories at christinehotchkiss.com. And if you'd like to be a sponsor, you may also email me to the address of stories at christinehotchkiss.com. Until next time, everyone, I wish you well and you take care. <laughs>